Football Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Well, I think there's a huge benefit just going through it a second time. You know, OTAs and mini camp and training camp were all the first time for him last year. So when you can go now through a second time, you know what's coming. Um, I think it helps you just simplify, you know, what you're having to focus on. And, and you also know defense is better. You know the speed of the game better. So um, that's that natural growth that takes growth that takes place as you go through the league. Did you play that because his voice cracked? No, I didn't. I literally didn't. Clowning Kirk like that? No. I didn't. I think not. we ha- I would I never. Think, I think we have somewhere in our system just it's like a uh-huh. highlight reel of him having his voice crack at the line of scrimmage, right? Uh-huh. Red 98. How to, how to, how to. His voice cracks. <laughs> it happens. Happens to See? everybody. That's right okay. There. You like that? Yep. You like that? Yep. Well, this is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. The show is presented by our friends at TCL. Redefine creativity with the TCL 30V 5G smartphone. Enjoy blazing fast 5G speed, an AI-powered 50-megapixel triple camera system, ultra-realistic and true-to-life visuals powered by Next Vision, and booming sound from the dual speakers. Learn more at tcl.com it is time once again for judd's training Mm. camp notes Mm. and i love that sometimes at the top of your notes when you'll send them to us you'll put like a little weather summary too yeah you didn't do it for this one but yesterday you put like uh like humid 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 and then some other weather note and i'm wondering if you could put like the full details the barometer the humidity percentage and i won't be doing that okay but uh wednesday was definitely hot not as muggy and a nice a nice breeze it was a good day for Mm -hmm. full pads with i believe no time limit restrictions we're past the uh, point where they can actually have huge restrictions on practice time i think it's an hour and a half when it starts uh, so, yes, yesterday was a perfect day to work in full pads as far as the comfort goes. You worked up a big sweat, but you know what? That's what football's all about, gentlemen. Come on! Football! Yes, yes. All right, so where, where do you want to start here? What's the what's the juiciest thing in your you know camp what? notes from yesterday? You know what? Let's rip off the Band-Aid immediately and go back uh, to what Kirk was talking about at the top of the show, which was a question about Kellen Mond. And let's talk about the battle for backup quarterback. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like this this evolves to me day by day. And and you know what? If you want, like, well thought out, I've watched all the practices, and now I can weigh in, but until then I can't, you're, you're simply in the wrong place. Purple Daily brings you daily analysis and reaction. And so what I like to do at the start – of each practice, especially the ones in full pads, there's only 11 of them, is to really go and delve into how the competition for not the starting job, that's non-existent. It's Kirk Cousins, but the backup job. Kellen Mond v. Sean Mannion. Mm -hmm. Shall we talk about it, boys? Okay. Let's do it. All right. So Kellen Mond continues, and this has become a pattern, to be given every chance. It's very, very clear the coaching staff is desperate for him to win the backup job. Now, I would make an argument that I think Mannion still makes it. I think they carry three. Um, so I don't think, I don't believe the third quarterback is in trouble of being cut. But clearly, there's a big difference between, you know, Mannion is a guy that we know and Kirk likes him. But if he's the backup and he has to play for, because Kirk, you know, for the first time in his career gets hurt and he has to play three or four games, we're basically screwed, right? I think the Mon thought is third round pick. Let's train him in the offense. Let's get him going. And if Kirk gets hurt, it's far from ideal, but we might have a shot. Well, I'm going to tell you right now two padded practices in, and I believe eight practices total. Kellen Mond is bigger. Uh, the ball looks better coming out of his hand. The amount of time that he takes, though, to make a decision about where to throw and the amount of time that he is taking off. Or, right now because he in a game would have either been sacked or just things break down is entirely too long and in a couple days ago i said well you know with what the vikings are doing it's a new scheme a new offense for mond as well so it's going to take some time and i'm willing to give him that benefit of the doubt but i'm telling you right now there have been far far too many occasions 
right now where there are plays designed that I don't think are that difficult and he is thinking entirely too much. We've got we've got to start to read and react quicker, very yeah. quickly, or I become very concerned that this guy is a third quarterback and maybe a practice squad guy. Yeah, there's a lot of really smart quarterback gurus that will tell you that you can you can have the arm strength, you can have the accuracy, you can have the mobility in the pocket, all these different things. You can you can be, you know, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen outside the pocket. But if you can't process everything you're seeing within a second and a half, two seconds, none of it matters. So it's but it's also it's hard to know, okay, is he just not does he not have NFL processing speed? Which Christian Christian Ponder didn't have NFL processing speed. Most quarterbacks don't have NFL processing speed. Or was he stuck in a bad situation in year one, didn't get the proper introduction into the league, and now he's trying to devour this new playbook? You know, it's it's hard to know. And maybe we can find out more as we go through, but he's also had six months to sort of read the right. playbook and figure it out. He's gone through OTAs and mini camps and Bingo. you don't get you don't get ten years. <laughs> right. You, exactly especially right. when you're a third round pick. If you're a first round pick, maybe they give you a little bit more leeway. But you're not you're not going to get a decade here to figure it out. So that's this is an inter. And, and I'm just going off what you're saying here, but mm-hmm. interesting critique of Kellen Mond. And I think that both certainly Mannion and Mond, to a large degree, are going to get their opportunities in the exhibition games, and so yeah. that's going to help a bit. But I will say, I will say this as why I believe that right now this discussion is important. The 2022 Vikings have expectations, all right? And I would tell you this. If this continues through, because there's only three exhibition games, if this continues through the first two, and and Mannion's not going to change. He is who he is, uh, which in my opinion is not a sufficient backup to actually have to play. Uh, There's going to come a point in time where I think you do have to sit down and say, okay, Kirk doesn't get hurt, but that's a really bad thing to be be like, well, Kirk doesn't get hurt, so it's no big deal. Well, you know, the second that you say that, something goes wrong, Phil. So I I also think where this becomes an important discussion is this is not a rebuilding, retooling team. I I mean, they call it what? A competitive rebuild. But the reality is ownership has expectations of winning football games pretty damn quick here. Um, Right now, I wouldn't feel comfortable with either of these guys being my backup. I'm not saying you're going to get a great one, but I am saying I think you at least have to have a guy that can process the game itself if Kirk goes out. And right now, Mannion and Mond, and Mond is scaring me more and more, don't have the ability to process the game itself. Okay, what is – so we're we're kind of touching on the – the stuff that doesn't look so good is there. Are there any flashes? Because like on on one hand, you could here's all the things he needs to get better at. But if he's not also showing flashes at the peak of his potential, then I don't know if any of this. What's what's the hope, right? So is he is he is he showing any flashes from what you can see in these practices? He's throwing a better football right now. His football. I, I mean, when when he does throw, the problem is if it comes out too late, it doesn't matter. But yes, he is. He definitely, as far as physically and the actual release of the football itself from his arm, he definitely looks the part far more in two thousand in camp two thousand twenty two than he did camp two thousand twenty one. Uh, but just to, not to be a buzzkill here, but the reality is this: if the ball doesn't come out, like if you can't process it, I can throw the ball great. But guess what? I'm sacked. And at some point in time, too, this does get into the very important discussion of how much can you realistically expect from your line? Because, you know, it's fine to say, well, he's sacked again. The line stinks, right? Okay. At some point in time here, though, the line's expectation has to be we've done our job. You need to deliver the football, which is not a simple job, but, of course, it's imperative to being successful. I think there's a a whole conversation, whether it's talking about Mond or even talking about Kirk, of – because sometimes I think if the offensive line isn't perfect and a brick wall and keeping the pocket entirely clean all the time, then we think they're failing. But that's not how the NFL works because guess what? The opposing team is sending 275-pound athletic machines to try and hunt your quarterback. They're going to do it sometimes successfully. So you're, whether it's Monder or Cousins, yeah, the Vikings need to get their center situation fixed, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. But 
you're not going to have it perfect. You're not going to have it clean all the time. You're not going right. to have these conditions that are flawless. And, oh, now the quarterback can sit back there for a half hour with a white <laughs> Russian in hand and survey the defense and progress back and forth. So, yeah, what's the what's the realistic Correct. expectation for what the offensive line should provide? Anyways. All right, from bad to good. I'm trying to mix things up here, okay? No, so this I'm going to this is objective I'm gonna give, journalism I'm gonna here. Give you objective the good, journalism. Yeah, but there's good things too. There's good things too. And I don't don't want to necessarily bury those good things. The good. The top 3 receivers look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And yes, this is probably redundant, but you know what? It's fun to talk about. Justin Jefferson is ready to go right now. Justin Jefferson, you can tell he is, and this is what I love about this kid. I think he has taken it personally that he is considered, you know, oh, you're top 10, Justin. You know, you're number six, you're number five, something like that, right? Six, probably. Uh, And he's like, no, that's BS. I'm number one. This guy in practice is playing like you do in games. Uh, I can't help but watch him. And, and, Mm. There's there are several reasons why training camp practices are excruciating to watch, right? The heat, the redundancy of the plays, the fact you don't have tackling. Like there's a lot of things about football practice. Why would I want to watch football practice? But I'm going to tell you right now, if you have an inkling to come out to TCO, there's one guy to watch, 18. Um the amount of fun it is in seeing a true craftsman prepare to basically take the dagger to teams is phenomenally fun. Like, wow. like there is wow. the dagger. The to dagger, teams. yeah. But I mean, he is. I'm telling you guys, when you see a craftsman, and that's what Jefferson is. He is he is honing a craft. And here's what I love, and I think this is the I think this is something a lot of players talk about, but they don't really know what they're talking about, and it's certainly hard to practice. Every snap that Justin Jefferson is on the field in training camp practice, there's a purpose to it, and that is to cut your heart out, Packers, Lions, Bears, opponents. That is to cut your heart out. Uh, he is not nearly as as like brash as Moss was. I mean, Moss, to, to call a spade a spade, could be a complete jackass. Yeah. Justin Jefferson is a good kid. But, but Jefferson make, seems more mature at his age than Moss 100%, was at his. Hundred percent, and I think I think he's more comfortable uh, in some ways in his own skin at at this point in life too. But that being said, he has every desire that Moss had to basically shove it up anybody's. You know what? Who didn't draft him, and to show that by the end of the season. He should be considered among, if not the top receiver in the entire league, and it's a delight to watch. I love it. There's a video that's kind of blowing up on the score on the TikTok account. I'm assuming Judd was the videographer for that one-handed Justin Jefferson catch in the back of the end yeah. zone. Just an yeah. individual drill. Very good, Judd. Just reaches up with one hand, pulls it down. It's does unbelievable. A, little, a dunk through the crossbar. It's unbelievable. He he caught one from so O'Connell was throwing balls to him in those drills as well on Wednesday and. O'Connell's how O'Connell was drafted in the third round, I have no idea. Like he's got a hitch in his technique. Like his pat I don't know who oh, you're scout, done, scouted you're, him. Well, he's you're not, saying he was an over he was an over completely. Oh, completely. Like I'm sure he's incredibly smart, clearly. Dude, but, you should uh, you should do a full article on scornot.com just just ripping his throwing mechanics. Go and watch <laughs> go and watch the clips it's no that surprise, Dex has Kevin posted. O'Connell's NFL career Dude, didn't take off. His mechanics are so flawed. He's got like a little hitch. But anyway, he he threw a very, very average to below one to Jefferson. And Jefferson one hands it, makes a great play, and just laughs. That's Justin Jefferson. You know, I don't uh, know if, if you quite understand the power of your videographer work here so far at training camp. So it's my new craft in life. I take almost, notes and do video <laughs> videography, dude. We're almost up to nine thousand TikTok followers. And there's been two videos just in the last few days here. One of them's kind of gone viral, almost 200,000 views, and it's it's amazing framework by you. And it's Lewis Seen <laughs> just ripping a tackling dummy in half on a tackle. Yep. And uh, and then the one you posted or sent to Declan to post yesterday of Jefferson catching a pass with one hand and then dunking it through the crossbar is up to almost 40,000 views so far. 
on the Scorner TikTok account. Who would have thought that Judd would be the master videographer yep. behind viral TikTok videos? Always be in prepared in life. Always be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> who would have thought that a guy who used to be the main Vikings beat guy at the Star Tribune now would be doing TikToks? Yep. Put the pen down and pick Evening up the Judd. camera. Evening. Yep. Purple Daily Minute. Sorry. Purple, Purple Daily, Daily Minute. Minute. Purple it's Daily my Minute. new thing. I've renamed it. Yeah. Love it, love it. All right, uh, before we get back to Judd's camp notes here, a shout out to a new partner of ours on Purple Daily, Prize Picks. Okay, hey an easy way to play daily fantasy. So here's how it works: you pick between two and five players and an over under on their projections, and can win up to ten times on any entry. Prize Picks offers every major sport. NFL, NBA, N- uh, MLB, NHL, college sports. So PGA's on here too. And I got to tell you, man, that's where inject that into my veins. Uh, you can even run mixed sport entries where you can take the over on like a cousin's thing combined with the over on like, I don't know, Ricky Fowler or something. And you can pair those in the same entry. Use the promo code NORTH, promo code NORTH, and prize picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Check out the prize picks app or the website at prizepicks.com. Uh, and while you're at it, maybe check out Livia if you want to lose some weight this fall heading into football season. <laughs> it's a good huh? co- combo. Yes, it, exactly yeah. right. And and I am down, as I've been talking about for months now, 40 pounds, thanks to my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers. And here's the best part. Because of them, I am keeping that weight off. And that is the toughest thing in life, right? We've all lost weight, and that's fantastic. But the question becomes, can you keep that weight? Weight off. I've done that. Dawn's down 12 plus pounds because she looked at me and she said, Judd, how are you losing all this weight? And I said, Livia. And she said, well, I'll join too. So the Zolgad family down 50 plus pounds. And now you can get personalized and guided support online or in person, whichever is most convenient for you. And the Simple Start Plan, ladies and gentlemen, it's only $59. $59 to reshape your body, to fit into clothes that haven't fit for years. 855 go Livia. Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. Join me in not only shedding those pounds, but keeping them off at Livia.com. Boom. All right, back to Judd's camp notes here. Oh, Handwritten and in the flesh. Let's talk tight ends. And by the way, guys, I followed through on my on my uh, vow from two days ago and went up in the stands to watch practice Wednesday. So, like, I got the big view. Now, I couldn't take pictures, and I couldn't send deck stuff because by then the team has said, no go on that. Uh, But I did track offensive lines, and I also tracked uh, tight ends. And so here's here's the important thing. Here's the important thing, too. Mm. So Irv Smith is out. Broken thumb, surgery, team, as Kevin O'Connell said a couple days ago, hopes that he's back for the opener against the Packers. You know, it's probably Next fair to man doubt up. that. Next man up. Exactly right. And, th- and that becomes the question when it comes to tight ends that can catch passes. Do you have that man? Do you have that guy? Come get your mans. Because. Mama, there goes that There's man. That man. And his name is Zach Davidson. <laughs> Actually, here's the thing about this. So so the first team tight ends that I saw the most were easily now, the, the guy that's ascended to Irv Smith Jr.'s place on the depth chart is Johnny Munt. Ben Ellison also got some first team work. Zach Davidson did too, but I think Zach Davidson and Ellison are probably battling for that that second spot. That's seven on seven with Mon second team yesterday. Davidson tipped the ball, not good, intercepted by Patrick Peterson. But he also caught a touchdown pass from Mon seven on seven against Harrison Smith. That's good. I will say this about the tight end battle. The names that I just gave you, the three names, are generally guys that are going to be asked to block more, not catch passes. Mm -hmm. If Irv Smith Jr. is going to be out for any amount of time and they want to work him in, now now there is a chance that K.J. Osborne simply steps into that place and just catches passes that Irv was going to catch. But if that's not the plan, if they're saying, oh, my God, Irv's going to miss the first three games, I think they need to go get a tight end that can catch passes because the guys that they've got are fine. But here's what I really don't like, and this is gonna this is gonna sound like a criticism, and I guess it sort of is, but for the purposes of camp notes, it's not meant to be. 
Johnny Munts of the world are guys that Kirk Cousins gets very comfortable to throwing to, and they have no ability for yak. Yeah. They have no ability for yards after catch. Yep. And in fact, they're almost they're almost safety blanket guys. Like if Irv Smith catches a pass, can be a crossing route, right? It can be a play that can turn explosive quickly because he's got the ability to do that. Um, I want to remove as many, and I'm not saying short passes because a Dalvin Cook can take a short pass and make a big play from it. Yeah. I want to remove safety blankets, though. So, you know, Kirk panics, it's third or, or it's second and 13. Oh, there's Johnny Munt, and there's five yards. Yeah, no, you want to get the ball in the hands of guys that can make something happen once they catch it. That's totally fair. Totally fair. Um, can I say, though, that a, I, this is where I'm intrigued by. It's Zach Davidson, right? He's the yep. he's yep. the Division two kid they drafted a year ago. So we brought this up on, uh, on our Scoop with Doogie discussion on Mackie and Judd, but it's worth bringing up on Purple Daily. Again, Division two, Division two, Division two, Not FCS, Division two. so grain of salt. But that dude caught 15 touchdown passes, 6'7 target, 15 touchdown receptions, his redshirt junior year in Division two in college. So I, I, I don't think he steps in and just replaces Irv Smith Jr., but if you're looking for, hey, between the 20s, we're going to run a lot of three wide receiver, maybe even four wide receiver sets, but for sure, very heavy on three wide receiver sets. So we're not as desperate for a tight end target between the twenties, but once you get into the ends, uh, into the red zone area, could a six foot seven tight end have a chance to stick his hands up in the air, those big paws back by the pylons, and catch five touchdowns this year? Just Maybe. throwing it out there. Maybe I think the first read there is Thielen. I think the second read there is Jefferson, and I think the third read there is probably Cook. But yes, you could be right. I like the Zach Davidson train. I'm a, I think I'm on board it. I he can, not, he can, he I've can not punt. decided yet. He can punt. I've not decided yet. Division two stud. I you could. I, I was a division two guy. I kind of like this. Wasn't a stud. I'm not gonna I can tell that you've got that, a division two like mm. bias of sorts. Okay, my college which is lost fine. his football team. Okay, so now I'm attaching myself well, to another obscure. Because your president, killed it. Your college two president killed it. Yeah. Declan has division two inferiority yeah. complex. Is that what you're saying, Judd? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I went to a division one college. Okay. Didn't come I dropped, anywhere near playing. I dropped out of one. Uh, all right. <laughs> so from from uh, a bad to good to sort of a question mark. Not bad. Question mark. We're going back to good before before we we end this thing on a bit of a downer. I apologize for that already. Uh, the good. Greg Joseph, the special teams coordinator, said he's going to be fantastic. Right. You know, it's unbelievable what you can do for a kicker when you put him in the right headspace. Seven for seven yesterday. Perfect. Kicks looked great. And I look. Any 50 yarders out there? Uh, you know, I couldn't tell because I, I had come down from the stands and I was behind the goalpost. Football's flying at me at that at that rate, at that place. But anyway, um, Greg Joseph, it is incredible, especially for a position like that, when you put a guy in the right headspace that he can be relaxed, functional, and not feel like, and this is very important, the coaching staff and his head coach hates him. Yeah. It's a, it's a novel approach. How about not making your potentially fragile-minded football player feel like garbage on a regular basis? How about provide working conditions where he feels yeah. empowered and confident to do his job and in a job in which you're probably not going to be perfect, having some leeway to not necessarily be perfect. Like, we want you to be perfect, but if you're not perfect... Right. Not going to rip you publicly to the media. Okay. Exactly. And the most important too, thing, too, he's not a football player. He's a kicker. Like, no. he's not a football player. I have no problem with, with not getting a, in the a real face human. of guys who are football players. Doesn't but, I mean, feelings. he's a specialized. His leg is an assassin to the hopes of opponents. That's what his <laughs> leg is. It's an assassin oh. to the hopes of opponents. All right. Should we get to it? I feel like I feel like this is going to be this is going to eventually become a topic on any show that truly cares about this team. But because we're only two pad practices in and eight full practices, uh, as far as also shorts and shells go, I feel I feel like people are trying to wait. You know what? 
In this life, you don't wait. You react, you move, and that's how you win. We Let's like to about- think that we're ahead of the curve on a regular uh, basis here on Purple Daily business. and Mackie and Judd. A lot of times people will make fun of us and mock us for throwing things out there or maybe you're panicking early or throwing trade ideas out early, and then later on they realize, oh, okay. Yeah, those guys are visionaries when it comes exactly to Minnesota right. sports. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. Because right now we're about to have a conversation that I guarantee has taken place, probably took place last mm-hmm. night mm-hmm. at TCL, and it's the center position. Garrett Bradbury did not look as bad on Wednesday in full pads as he did on Monday when new defensive tackle Harrison Phillips absolutely worked him. Uh, nonetheless, Bradbury did not look great. He did not look great. And I got to be honest, my biggest concern is I don't see any real change. Like, he is who he is, which I, I think is fair at this point. Okay, so we uh, I think we broke the story. I believe we broke this yesterday, but we have... Further confirmation that the Austin Schlottman days at backup center are now appear to be done. He's been moved to guard. Hmm. Chris Reed, who can play guard and center, but they had at guard to start practices. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was at guard through Monday's first full padded practice. Chris Reed spent a second consecutive day backup center yesterday. Um. The problem there is, and this is a, a communication thing, it's Mond, Mannion, and Reed as well. Uh, the football was on the ground far t- too much. And that's a different topic, but I have real concerns about the sloppiness of practice th- thus far in the padded practices. But let's just talk about the position now. So Reed is going to be, Reed is getting legitimate backup center snaps and work. And the only reason for that is because they saw Bradbury on Monday and said, whoa. And I don't know if they thought, Phil, that the weight gain, because I think Bradbury said he gained like 12 to 15 pounds, if that would would help him hold up against the Kenny Clarks of the world or what. But it's very, very clear that right now they understand that this is going to be and is a legitimate, and I'm telling you right now, this is not panic, just to hammer this home. This is a legitimate concern. It's still a thing. Is, is what you're saying. And this is usually, traditionally, the time of camp. Once you get like a week in and you get some padded practices under your belt, but you're heading into the first preseason game or joint practice in a couple weeks against San Francisco, this is the, the, the time of camp where you would start to see some switching around where, okay, we gave you all mini camp, all OTA, all off season, and we even gave you a week, week and a half into camp and some padded practices and we still don't feel great about your progress, whether it's Bradbury or other positions. Right. Then you start to see, oh, look at so-and-so is mixing in at this position. Oh, they made a switch over here. So then the question becomes, okay, can Chris Reed, without really any extensive experience at center, a lot of experience at guard, but I don't I don't think he's actually taken a snap at center in a, in a regular season game, maybe some preseason work. Sure. Can he get up to speed enough? You mentioned like some of the botched snaps and like the you know the ball hitting the ground. I'm a little less worried about that. I think if he just went and got some reps and just snapped a football to his quarterbacks after practice or between reps a hundred times a day, too. okay, you'll they get that it. timing down and you'll get used to how those hands feel underneath your pads. Shotgun where- though. Shotgun is really bad because one one snap, I think it was with Monda quarterback, went just flying over yeah, the poor no. guy's head. You don't like to see that. But the I think the reps can kind of iron that stuff out. The stuff that's yeah. less fixable is once the ball is snapped, if you're just getting pushed right. around by the interior defensive lineman. So um, that's probably something as Judd goes back up in the stands here over the next few days when you watch Chris Reed. Yeah, the, the, the snap being clean is one thing, but how often is he getting blown off the line of scrimmage compared to Garrett Bradbury? And maybe it's hard to answer because if Bradbury's facing the ones on defense more often and the Dalvin Tomlinsons and the Harrison Phillips and Chris Reed gets to face the backups more often in reps and they cr- and they cross match like the ones versus the twos. But yes, yeah, this is uh, it's not shocking that they would. What happened to Schlotman, by the way? Is he just not? <laughs> I think they were hoping to get it done. No, I think they were hoping. No, I think it, my guess is this. They were hoping to make Bradbury as comfortable as possible. And Schlotman was no threat. And well, they got ridiculous. through a practice and said, "No, I no, I think they're big on comfort, man. I think they're big on comfort. I think they're big on on giving guys chances without feeling necessarily that there's a guy breathing down their neck." So originally it was, "Hey, we brought in these gar- Garrett. 
you know how train wrecky our guard situation is. So we brought in right. all these guards, and they're just going right. to play guard. And Schlotman's just going to be kind of around. But the job is totally yours, unless you're well, a train wreck two weeks into camp, and then we're moving a guard to center. Yeah, and my guess is that they also, their desire was this. Uh, their desire was to start the season with probably Davis starting at right guard, Reed behind him, Ingram behind him. And now they're like, oh, my God, the center's really not good. Yeah. You guys were all right. And so, yeah, this is going to create, uh, I, I guess the next step is, is this. At some point in time, and he's going to have to clean things up clearly, but does Reed just start to mix in and get some some snaps with the ones? That's the next question. And that would be, you don't just do that casually, right? You don't. Just, no, that's uh, go time. That's hey, go time. Chris, let's Sound the alarm. The ones there. Sound yeah. the alarm. Tweet it out. Get it on Facebook. TikTok it. And they know that that if as long as media and fans are watching practice, oh hell yeah! If you move Garrett Bradbury out for even one snap, non injury yep. related, you're yep. opening up a whole new can for the fans, media, and for and for the players, and for Garrett Bradbury. Yeah, if and Garrett Kirk Bradbury, Cousins and yeah, if if Garrett Bradbury at some point here in camp is removed from the first team, I think there becomes a legitimate question of does he make the roster. Yeah, if he's not the starting center and he's not under contract after the year, the only yeah. thing would be Can you don't have because it's like Schlotman's a guard too, by the way. Yeah, so you you don't really have any other. He's the only center on your team. So if he's de determined to not be the starting center anymore, would you keep him around just to have another center, or, or would, would you, you try and get a backup? Sokol, if in an injury situation, uh, Sokol, uh, unfortunately, because of, of a bad snap, I believe he was taken out of drills um, with mine yesterday. He he had a really bad snap, Jesus. and and he just <laughs> left like he just left. Like, so so, KOC does not melt down, like he doesn't swear. I don't hear him, but I I can see his head drop at times, and so and he'll just it, pull you out of the. It's just this. Out of the practice. And then Sokol walked out, and so my guess is that they said, "Okay, Josh, that's enough for Josh." We're yeah, good. Josh We're is good probably here, at best, despite <laughs> despite my predictions before camp started. Josh is probably at best a practice squad guy, and he might. Not be a practice squad guy. He might be an insurance guy. Mm. And by mean, insurance, like, mean, I don't mean insurance for a team. I mean really an insurance guy. <laughs> We're a week and a half in, and you've gone. Dude, I got to pass judgment. This, you got to watch. Why this do you guys guy. send me like, out no, there? He's going to work for State Farm. Why do you send me out there? You Actually, send you know, me out you, there. You know what? For a reason. I, I missed the the easy segue there. Yeah, you did. Federated Mutual Insurance Company could go. be a great landing place. Great landing oh, place. Boy. Josh Sokol. All right. <laughs> And he could be among the other talented, smart people that put in their work to understand your industry and your company to help elevate your company through risk management tools and resources. It's also just a great place to work, too. I've had, got a chance to meet a lot of the people there. It's a great working culture. So if you happen to not be good enough at football and you need a job, you can also check out careers on federatedinsurance.com. But uh, if you're looking for some extra protection, a great partner, to, uh, to help protect you and your business, federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. Also, before we get into what are people saying about the Vikings and a random Viking of the week, if you have a grimy lakeside area, Declan mm -hmm. has the solution for you. Yes, I do. You know, you, you were just talking about insurance. Well, how about some uh, Aquaside to help remove that nasty lake muck from your, from your lake home or your pond? There's nothing worse. Nothing worse while you're enjoying these last few summer months, right? It's hot out. You like to run and jump off the dock. I know I certainly do. And then you land and you step in that lake weed and algae. Ugh, it's just the worst feeling. Well, Aquaside pellets can help take care of that. Uh, it's a safe product registered with the EPA and DNR. They're located here in the Twin Cities in the North Metro and White Bear Lakes. You can go and stop in and see them. Or you can order these products at Aquaside.com. Aquaside pellets help you remove that lake weed and muck. All right, what are people saying about the Minnesota Vikings? Let's go to a clip of Albert Breer here. Is he, correct me, is he athletic now? Where's Albert SI. Breer working? Sports SI. Illustrated. Com. Okay. Quarterback. Uh, Albert quarterback. Breer making his tour around the different training camps, and he's got some takes on Twitter and in this video clip on the Minnesota Vikings. The new staff here, new GM, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, new coach, Kevin O'Connell. They really like the core that was left in place by Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman. It's not just that those guys are good players. They believe they've got a really solid locker room. This is not a teardown, which should be music for the years, of guys like Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, and so many others. Takeaway number two, Christian Darisol looks like he's on the verge of a very big second year in the NFL. 
some of the staff here were with Trent Williams in Washington. They're not saying Darius is the next Williams, but they do see some similarities in his build and his movement skills. Mm, interesting. Wow. He also posted five thoughts from Vikings practice on Twitter. And so I'll just I'll buzz through these real quick and we can give our takes on his takes. Number one, ask the Vikings coaches, scouts who stands out. You'll get some form of the core here is really good. And that's character wise, too. This isn't a teardown. Number two, second thought, Christian Derrissaw stock going up emoji to the staff. Shades of Trent Williams, as he said in that video, in his build and movement. Number three, having experienced heady linebackers, Jordan Hicks and Eric Kendricks has been huge for Ed Donatel in putting in the Fangio-style defense here. Number three, two guys who could who could factor bigger than expected, K.J. Osborne and Cam Bynum, who's had a phenomenal spring. And then number five, the biggest question is probably at cornerback. Patrick Peterson has adapted quickly to play off more in Donatel's system, but the Vikings still have to sort out the rest at the position, Cam Dantzler and rookie Andrew Booth are competing for the job opposite Peterson. I don't agree with that. Dantzler has the job right now. It's not close. Like, like Booth has been good, and but there's been nothing in practices that, that has screamed Booth is competing. Booth is, is, I think, very solidly right now the third corner, and I like him, uh, but that's not a competition right now. Phil is... Phil has been proven correct. Cam, this coaching staff looked at Cam and said he's good. Sorry, my headphones cut out there. What would you say? Phil Mackey has been vindicated in his in his staunch defense, partially helped by your PFF grades. I love Dantzler. it. I love a week and a half into camp, and I am already correct about Cam Dantzler without having seen a game yet. And uh, Josh Sokol is working insurance. So, well, PFF like ba- basically, <laughs> I think that that you talked about this in July backed you up, right? Yes. And and so your thoughts off their chartage or or analysis of Dantzler right now looks like the Vikings brass and coaching staff has yeah. thought and said the exact same thing. The Dantzler slander has come from it's it, it reminds me a little bit of like the Tony Romo slander because he botched a snap as a holder and then had a couple late game interceptions but yeah. it overshadowed all this other amazing stuff they did in his career and he didn't win a Super Bowl but with Cam Dantzler it's like Okay, he was in the doghouse for whatever reason last year around this time. Mike Zimmer just had a falling out with him. And then he was, I think, deactivated for the first week. Yeah, he didn't play and, against Cincinnati. And then, and then he I, tweeted something. He tweeted frustration yeah. and that and that like sparked more controversy. And then I believe he was not in the right position for the Jared Goff game winning touchdown pass where the Lions yeah. picked up their first win. That's correct. And listen, I'm not saying he should be exonerated for those two things, but everything else was actually really good for him last year. And it's not a surprise that he's playing well at training camp here. So you are correct. All right. Are you guys ready here? Declan, are you so, mentally prepared for... So yeah, because uh, actually I was going to tease something up because I didn't see the random Viking of the week in the prep note. So I kind of thought maybe I, I you forgot, forgot about it. it. Yeah. So while you were doing this, though, I Googled a potential random Viking of the week for Mackie and Judd. Oh wow! You're, oh, you're turning wow. the tables. Do we potentially? Wow. Do oh, we potentially do something different for Random and Viking of the Week and have Mackie and Judd go up against each other? Now the wow. only issue is, out of circumstance, if Mackie and I pick the same guy, then that will be just hilarious, and this could just be derailed in thirty-five. Well, seconds. what are the odds? What are the odds of us picking the same guy? How about you changing the rules now completely? I thought you were gonna like phone a friend. No, well, like like I thought how, Thor well, might that one is so up on rattled the by random Viking of the week. He's yes. grabbing the reins and saying, "No, this enough, is unbelievable." Enough. Phil's gonna be embarrassed yeah. now. How, how about <laughs> this? Is like Con Air. But if Mackie gets the point, <laughs> it counts for Declan. John Malkovich. Okay, so I am, I am. So you're Declan. I'm pinch hitting for Declan today. Yeah. Random who's ta- Viking of the Week. Okay. tapping out? <laughs> I love it. I will say I was pretty excited for the one. I'll just save mine for next week for you guys. I'm pr- Unle- pretty excited about it. Again, Fran- though. It's Fran Tarkington. Unless it's this one, which will just be amazing. And I've had this, like, weird suspicion. It just could be. I don't know why. Or fear. All right. It would be, Im- there's, I don't know, it would be there's almost no way. impossible. Yeah. Okay. Well, all, all right. right. First clue. This Random Viking of the Week is from Kannapolis, North Carolina. Kannapolis. You guys from there with Kannapolis? Uh, we do not have the same one. So Okay, yeah. that's a good sign. All right. Uh, he played college football in the uh, All-Conference USA, where he was a first-team player. All-Conference USA player. All-Conference USA. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. This random Viking of the week, and one of the more random facts I've ever found, started a fashion brand with former Titans running back Chris Johnson after he retired. Luxury fashion brand Wealthy War Intentions. That's a very lengthy name for a company, but he started a company with Chris Johnson. Hmm, okay. This random Viking of the week also had a very good UFL career. This random Viking of the week played for these coaches. Rex Ryan, Brad Childress, Raheem Morris. But I will say his NFL statistics were all with Minnesota. But he did coach. He did. He was under those uh, under the tutelage of those coaches for two different stints. All right, I'm I'm going to take a guess. Okay, I'm pretty lost here. Uh, was it C.J. Mosley? Okay. Wow, dude, that's a deep pull that's right a, there. Well, he, yeah. play, he played for wow. the Jets. He got traded for Brooks Bollinger. So, okay. Brooks Bollinger would be another great guess, but I'm going to guess he probably the, didn't. The fashion partner line with, with Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson for a fashion line. Here's some <laughs> pleated khakis. This random Viking some of the Doc week. Doc Martens. Set a franchise record in his rookie season with the Vikings. A franchise record at the time. It has been broken. But it was a franchise record at the time. In when just he was some, a rookie. In just some category? Yep. In a game, he set a franchise oh, record so a for this. Game. He set a this. franchise record in a game as a rookie. Now, now, I do have a question. Was mm -hmm. Childress his first coach, or did he play for another one of those coaches first? Childress was his first coach. Okay. This random Viking League was a fifth round pick. By the Vikings. Uh, David Heron. Wow. Wow. That's as deep of cut as CJ Mosley. Maybe oh, deeper. I just wanted to say David Heron to show the audience how deep my Vikings linebacker knowledge goes. David Heron. This random Viking of the week only recorded. Sorry, last minute, last minute. 18 receptions in his Vikings career. 18 receptions. When he went to the UFL, he led the team in receptions under Marty Schottenheimer in 2011. Jamar Johnson. I'm done to my last guess here. J wait, hold on. So we got a receiver here. I love okay. Jamar Johnson. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna guess three times before Judd even rattles off his second one. All right. Andre Allison. Yeah. Oh, Andre Allison! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andre Allison. That's Let's one. go. David Heron. Let's That's go. awesome. Andre Dang. Allison set a uh, Vikings record. <laughs> He I returned forgot. a kick for 104 oh. yards his rookie year, which was uh, a Vikings record until Cordell Patterson broke it. I forgot he played for the Jets. So he was claimed off waivers by the Jets okay. in August of 09. Right, probably around the fa time mm. Favre came. It was August. He was claimed off waivers on August 5th of 2009. Right. Nice. But then he tore his ACL in the final preseason <laughs> game with the Jets. Right. He was scheduled to make the team. Um, but then tore his ACL. He then went to the UFL... Cup of coffee for the Bucks, and then went back to the UFL and led the team in receptions when they won the UFL title under Marty Schottenheim. Yeah, if I'm not wow, mistaken, dude. didn't Dante play for the Sacramento Lion Kings of that league? Yeah, I think he did. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. I think Denny coached in that league, too. Wow. I mean, he All might right, have coached got, Sacramento. We got Declan nice. back on the board there. Back yep. on the board. Andre Allison, baby. Amazing. All right, there's your random Viking. I'll save. I, we'll get you back in. Maybe you and I can kind of yeah. tag team against the well, uh, treasure trove of knowledge that is Judd here. 
I, I don't think it's going to be possible to overcome the 16-point lead he has here. We'd have to chip away at that over the course of 2022-23. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see. All right. All right, dudes. There it is. Uh, that is, oh, over on uh, Flagrant Howls, if you're a Timberwolves fan, Craig oh. Kilborn scheduled to join the show today to list <laughs> nice. his five favorite obscure Timberwolves. Oh, my so God. So check that out. Speaking see of you guys random wolves. Tomorrow on uh, Purple Daily. Gary Leonard.